Welcome back chaps, today we are going at it again, this time we are reviewing the Charge of the Light Brigade. I'm pretty sure there's been three versions of this already, but we're going to do the 1968 Tony Richardson version. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe so you don't miss out in the future. Anyway, let's get into it. On a day of confusion, disorder and defeat, in one brilliant moment of madness, the 600 officers and men of the British Light Cavalry faced the entire Russian army. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I really do like these older films from the 60s, 70s, even the 50s, uh, where they did put quite a bit of attention into uniforms and the numbers. It looks really good. This was the age of pageantry and splendor, when soldiers dreamt of glory and war was a glamorous game. It was a time of arrogance and power, of regiments resplendent on parade, and the richest and proudest of them all was the symbol of the British Empire, the heroic Light Brigade. Through the gates and over the walls of Sebastopol. Will you join me? We'd not get up the slopes, Russell. I would. He would. <laughs> but he would be alone. Yes, alone. Death loves a crowd. Watch out, death will pick out the crowd. Another thing that I do enjoy about older films is that when people talk, you can actually hear them. Unlike so many modern films where they're all whispering or grumbling away and you can't make out a word they're talking about, older films are nice and clear and crisp, which I really appreciate. <laughs> The very, very rich, the ruling class, and the poor. The righteous who oppose the war, and the zealous who demand... Trevor Howard as Lord Cardigan, John Gielgud as Lord Raglan, Jill Bennett as Mrs. Jubilee, Harry Andrews as Lord Lucas, Vanessa Redgrave as Clarissa, and David Hemmings as Captain Nolan. Now, this is one of my favourite characters in the entire film, or at least when I was a kid. I used to watch the film and always used to like this guy, uh, commanding the Scots to advance at the Battle of Alma. The men who came to fight and die, and those who came to watch. Attack, sir! Attack, attack, attack! Attack what? Attack where? Guns, Mr. Nolan! On a day of confusion, disorder, and defeat, in one brilliant moment of madness, the 600 officers and men of the British Light Cavalry charged the entire Russian army. That grand heroic moment, the charge of the Light Brigade. of that. They certainly don't make trailers like they used to anymore, that's for sure. Now personally I think it's a really great film. Um, I think it shows the sort of the courage of the average soldier, um, it shows the bravery, it also shows the incompetence of some, uh, certain individuals who probably should have been retired out of the military decades ago but were still in those positions. Um, it shows society, it shows the different perspectives I think it just does a really good job all around. My question to you guys though, if you have seen the film, uh, what do you think about the sort of cartoony pieces in uh, when they're going transitioning from one period to an another? Um, as a kid, I love them. As an adult, I find them slightly annoying. Um, what do you think? Uh, let me know below. 
Now whilst we in this video and most people usually concentrate primarily on the Crimean aspect, the war did actually have quite a bit that happened on the west coast of the Black Sea, north of Constantinople and south of the Danube because the Russians did invade in that area and also on the east coast of the Black Sea you had a lot of land battles between the Russians and the Turkish army or the Ottoman army. But today we are going to be mainly concentrating on the Crimea. So after landing, the British and French forces had to march from Kalamata Bay to get down to Sevastopol. Uh, they did have a lot of cholera issues and sickness on the travels over and on the march, so their troops were depleted somewhat. But the first battle was the Battle of Alma, where the Russians put up defences along the river. Named Alma, and there was a village also. Um, you had the British and the French attacking with the French forces heading around to the right, uh, whilst the British were to advance more or less up the centre um, and flank left if the opportunity presented itself. Um, for the most part, British forces did wait until the French managed to scale the cliff edges, uh, which were quite undefended because the Russians thought that no one would be able to scale them. Uh, but once the French had reached the top, that's when the British attack went forwards to push them off of the main redoubt. Uh, due to the land, um, formations, the cavalry didn't really have much of a part to play and so the Russian army did escape. Next up we had the, uh, the siege of Sevastopol uh, which lasted for over a, well, nearly a year. Uh, it was October of 1854 and ended in September of 1855 so nearly a year. Um, they believed it was going to be a quick siege, quick assault, uh, but as with most things in war, it didn't turn out that way, unfortunately, and a lot of men did die. And now that the siege was committed to, the British were put on the right side of the line, and it was at this point that the Russians decided that they would make their assault to try and disrupt uh, the supply lines. And that's where we have the Battle of Balaclava. So it started off with Russian cavalry and infantry advancing and taking the redoubts which were being held at that point by Turkish infantry. The Turkish infantry withdrew. Uh, the Russian cavalry then advanced on to try and take the second line of redoubts, uh, which is where we get the thin red line. We've often seen the, the painting of it and we've heard about it. Scottish line infantry stood their ground, volleyed and halted the Russian cavalry. They were then countercharged by the British heavy cavalry um, and forced to withdraw. It would be quite nice to see that in a film as well because uh, you don't really hear much about the heavy cavalry. Lord Raglan, he was stationed on a hilltop so he had quite a good view of what was going on and now he gave orders uh, that we need to prevent our artillery pieces being carried away uh, by the Russians. And after several orders had been given um, and nothing had happened, Nolan took the orders and went into the valley to give them over by hand. Now Captain Nolan was a pretty fiery character and when he gets down into the valley and Lord Ra uh, Cardigan and Lucan are again seeming to not be prepared to follow the orders, he starts waving his arms and points down the valley to where the Russians are and the guns. Um, because that's what they can see from where they are. Um, so with that, Lord Cardigan sets off down the valley with the Light Brigade. Uh, that was a mixture of Light Dragoons, Hussars and Lancers. Although the 11th Hussars are the um, ones that people think of the most, the Cherry Bombs. About halfway down, uh, Captain Nolan realises his error, so he races forwards to try and correct it. Uh, unfortunately he is hit by an artillery shot, one of the first of the battle and killed, and that sets uh, the the Light Brigade without any option of uh, altering their course and they go straight down the valley getting shot at from Russians on both flanks, artillery on both flanks and the main battery down at the far end. I'm sometimes sort of awestruck by the fact that they managed to get down there in the first place, then they took the gun positions, then they were countercharged by thousands of Russian cavalry, the whole Cossack core basically, uh, or division, uh, countercharged them. Uh, they were fighting there for their lives. Uh, luckily some French, um, I think they were chasseurs, uh, came down from on their left flank as well to provide support. Um, 
and they managed to get back up whilst yet again being blasted by artillery and small arms fire from their flank. Absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, really incredible. And then the final major battle for the British French forces of the war was the Battle of Inkerman, which you don't really hear that much about, but it's actually a very impressive battle. The Russians were coming forwards with two columns with roughly 134 pieces of artillery and I think it was about 42,000 men um, to try and push the British off of their defensive positions. It was kind of a similar situation, I guess you could say, to the Battle of Balaclava uh, due to the nature of the terrain. Um, but up they came and were repelled multiple times trying to take different positions. In one uh, instance they were coming on and 300 men of the British, uh, I'm not sure which regiment it was, left their redoubt and just bayonet charged and routed about four Russian regiments before they then had to withdraw back to the redoubt. Uh, there are so many acts of heroism that you hear throughout the battle, it's really incredible um, and people should definitely research it a bit more. Uh, but the battle kind of swayed backwards and forwards, could have gone either way. Um, and just when the Russians started to be getting the upper hand, all of a sudden the light infantry arrived. And then when they were just starting to get the upper hand again, the guards arrived. Um, and so it was just constantly, just as they were starting to get somewhere, they get beaten back. And then they start to get somewhere else, and then they get beaten back. Uh, but it was a very, very long and bloody battle, uh, which did end in the Russians being forced to withdraw. Uh, so it was an Allied victory. So the above is 24 main battles which are, are reported to be in the Crimean War. Um, that was just a quick uh, Google which I did just to find out approximately. So there's 24 different options that we can use in our games. Um, but also if you want to play games like Sharp Practice and Skirmish games, there's so many different uh, potential things that you could make up the base in it. Um, gives us a huge amount of scope for games um, and I think yeah, we should look to these different wars that don't probably get as much uh, love as others do. And that way hopefully we can try and bring a bit more interest back into it. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, please leave some likes, some subscribes if you haven't already, and some comments down below. And I'll see you next time.